what is happening YouTube? How y'all doing today? It is Friday, uh, early today, doing an early video. It's, it's 8.45 right now, so doing an early one today. Uh, my name is Joe, just hanging out in the garage, just your average Joe. Uh, we've got some sales to go over. We got a bunch of comments to go over. Um, so stick around, hang out, see what, uh, see what comes up on these comments, because I think there's some good stuff that we can share. Um, again, my name is Joe. I've been reselling full-time for on eBay full-time for about eight years. Uh, but I've been buying and selling on eBay since 2000, long time. So, uh, definitely, definitely, uh, if there's any questions or anything, I can, I can try to help based on my experience. That's kind of what this is all about. So, uh, let's go ahead and dive in. Cause we got, I think we have some decent stuff to cover today. Uh, and we have some good sales today as well. So we'll kind of mix, mix both of those up. Uh, let's start with some comments though. Hopefully your Friday is going well, just to give you a quick story. I just got back. I woke up at 5.30 in the morning. There was a community yard sale advertised. 45 houses, community yard sale. It's been up for about 10 days or so. Um, and so I was like, you know, I've been planning on going to it. It's up in Bents, um, just north of Benson, which I'm in Fayetteville. So it was about an hour drive for me, uh, North Carolina. And uh, I, you know, it's been, it's been overcast and raining and things like that last night. Today, it's supposed to be just overcast, not really raining much, maybe some, some drizzles, but nothing crazy. Uh, so I, I, I pondered whether even going, but I was like, you know what, let's go. They have advertised it for over almost two weeks now. I messaged the lady that had the post up last night and said, Hey, everything is still good. Good for tomorrow. She said, yes. So I was like, okay, cool. So I get there. Two houses had yard sales. I, I was like, I was not happy. I got there. Now granted, I got there at six 45. Uh, woke up at 5.30, left house about 5.40, stopped and got cash and got gas. And I got in the neighborhood about 6.45, 6.47. Um, so I said to myself, okay, there's only two folks set up. They didn't have nothing really at all, clothes. So I went ahead and said, you know what? There's a McDonald's like not even 10 minutes from there. I was like, let me go to the McDonald's, grab me a coffee, grab me a breakfast sandwich. Um, and then, you know, just kind of sit in the parking lot and fiddle fart my phone for a few and then head back and see maybe if folks set up. So I, I ended up doing that and getting back there about 725, almost 730. Um, nothing. There was, there was one other, one more house that was set up. I was like, this is, this is, this is ridiculous, man. I can't believe it. So I'm sure tomorrow they'll have half the neighborhood will be set up possibly, but I'm not driving back up there. Fridays are my day uh, to hit up. Like if it's a Friday, Saturday sale, I always go the first day. Now, granted, technically tomorrow for a lot of them will be the first day. Uh, but I'm not going to drive all the way. I'm not driving all the way back up there to hope, especially when there's plenty of yard sales around where I'm at. The only reason I did it was because it was a community yard sale Fridays. Not, there's not a ton of yard sales happening on Fridays. There are a few, several handful, but not a ton. So I figured, Hey, community yard sale, 45 houses, even if 10 are set up, you know, Chances of getting something were, you know, are decent. Is my mic on? Yes. All right. So, but like I said, three houses, all household slash baby kids clothes and clothes. And I mean, not anything that I, I was, I was looking, no electronics on the, you know, there was a biker helmet that I almost picked up, but they were like, yeah, we looked it up on Google. I'm like, oh Lord, here we go. It goes for $80. And I'm like, yeah. Okay, here we go. You're using Google Lens. That's <laughs> so when people look stuff up on Google Lens or even on eBay when they don't know how to look up completed listings, they just look up what it's going like what people have them up for. I can't even have nine times out of ten. I can't even like I just check out because I'm like, a Google Lens is showing you what people have it up for as well. eBay when you look has it what's up as well. Did you look at sold comps? What these things are actually selling for? I can put a turd on eBay for three thousand dollars, and you look up Joe's turds, and oh my gosh, they're up for three thousand dollars. Joe, pump out turds for me. Come on, man. Like, what are they selling for? My turds will sell for nothing. That's a, that's just an analogy. So, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. So I, I immediately start checking out when people start saying comp. I saw a Google Lens Google comp for eighty dollars. Like, get out of here. I'm done. Uh, okay. We're at a yard sale. You're not getting what's on Google. If it's on, if you want to get what's on Google, then post it yourself on Google and see what you get $80 for it. Pfft, good luck. Anyway. So there's that. Uh, let's go over comments and, uh, and, uh, yeah, that burns me on my same thing. Video games, all of it. When people give me like high end comps on stuff, I'm like one dude, one dude tried to tell me, Oh, wow. You can get a, it was, it was, he was selling a PS3 and some games and, uh, he shoots me the screenshots from Amazon 
for what they're selling for on Amazon. I'm like, get the, are you kidding me? Amazon is so freaking inflated and like that has to be pristine condition, mint to be sold on Amazon. Good luck selling on Amazon. So don't give me a comp from Amazon. Are you freaking kidding me? No, I'm not spending $200 on a PS3. You get the, get, well, I'll give it you 150. No, I sell them all day for about 120 with a bunch of 100 to 120 with a bunch of games. I use eBay. That's realistic. So then I need to get it at like $60, $50, $40, somewhere in that range in order to make it profitable or make it worth my time. I was like, you know, so I just, I just stopped it. Sometimes I'll try to educate and let them know, especially if I want the item, but there's other times where they're just, they're just so far off in la la land thinking they can get all this big money for stuff. And I'm just like, good luck. Then go sell it on that platform. Go, go sell it online yourself and figure out how to see how well that goes. Um, and then you're not considering fees, taxes, shipping, like, there's other stuff involved there. You know, time, it ain't going to sell right away. It could sit for two, three months or longer. It might, I mean, so it's just, people kill me, man. People kill me. So uh, anyway, that's my rant for the day. That's all I got. All right, so let's go over some comments. What are you doing? Do, you know where my new flip -flops are? Do I know where your new flip-flops are? Yeah, they're out of I have no idea. I don't keep up with your flip-flops. No, I left them inside last night. Yeah, I know. You leave stuff all over the place and you never know where <laughs> where it is. You got to look because it's probably in your room or in my room or in the kitchen. I looked everywhere. I don't believe you looked everywhere because just like your iPad, you looked everywhere and it was sitting on your bed. Yeah, I probably looked everywhere. Okay. Well, once I'm done with this, I can help you maybe look for it. But uh, I think you should do a little bit more looking because your looking jobs are not – your looking skills need to be improved. All right. So anyway, let's get some, get to some comments. Um, so Bing, Bing Flowsby. I think this is the first comment I've seen from you. Bing Flowsby. Seems like eBay and Amazon are using the same terrible AI to generate the search results. Yeah, you're you're probably not wrong. You're probably not wrong there. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know a whole lot about you know. I know the AI. So I don't, I'm not a fan of AI. Um, but yeah. You're, you're probably not wrong. I don't really use Amazon much. Replied live on newest video. All right. So Bing flies beef flows beef. Appreciate you commenting. Hopefully you're sub you're subscribing. If I can help at all, let me know. Uh, or if you have any questions, comments, drop them just like you did. I'm happy to help uh, or, or d touch on things. I don't, I can't really speak on that one too much other than I agree. The AI is terrible. Uh, Winston Wolf 21. Uh, this is, I think you've commented, you've commented a couple times. Ron unedited Joe hype. I appreciate you, Winston. Thank you, sir. Um, appreciate you hanging out. Appreciate you watching the videos. Appreciate you supporting. Thank you. Um, we got stealth. Uh, stealth says, thanks for the feedback. Oh yeah. Stealth was, I think the one talking about the returns and stuff or the buyer's remorse, wasn't it? I believe. Yeah. Stealth. Thanks for the feedback. I will keep on grinding and getting items sourced and listed. I hope it, I hope it tones down this year. Thanks for the other tips and tricks. I have been a very small seller for the past 18 years. Well, that's, that's, you've been, you've been around for a while then, you know how things are for the most part. Yeah. It's, um, you know, that's all you can do is keep, keep turning the wheel, man. How do you keep turning the wheel? You keep sourcing, you keep listing, keep sourcing, keep listing. You know, like, are you going to have a pile of stuff at some point? Like I have Poss Yeah. I mean, it's going to happen. And then you just, you know, have your own yard sale and get rid of stuff cheap and, and kind of purge, you know, that's, I've that's been on the back of my mind is uh, just having my own yard sale to kind of purge some of this stuff out. Um, but appreciate you subscribing, uh, Stealth. Well, hopefully you're subscribed. Appreciate you hanging out and commenting. And again, if you have any questions that I can help with, um, I think you talked about buyer's remorse um, was the previous comment. And I think Kurt had a follow-up to that. So we'll touch on that as well. Um, Jesus says, it's that 91% isopropyl alcohol. Yeah, I couldn't remember the isopropyl. I totally messed that up when I was trying to remember what it was. Uh, from the Dollar General. It is. That's exactly where I got mine from. I ran up the road to the Dollar General and got it. Uh I'm going to go get some words of wisdom. Gracias, Average Joe. Hey, you're welcome. I, look, I had no idea it worked on lenses, man. So, and there, I, I don't even know if there's a YouTube video about that. I'm going to look it up and see if anybody's got anything about isopropyl alcohol, putting it on lenses. If not, I'm going to do my own and I'm going to show it 
I'm going to get the next console I get that doesn't work. I'm going to do a video just to show that off and be like how to get lenses to work. And maybe that'll, you know, it can help help a bunch of folks out. Uh, there may already be stuff out there about it. I don't know. I didn't search, but uh, if not, that's um, that's my that's my plan. Um, uh, Yarina says, just stopping by to say, Hey, it's been a while. Appreciate you hanging out and stopping by. Uh, I'm watching all of your videos, enjoying them as usual, not commenting much because I'm RVing in Florida. I envy you. I'll be RVing on Monday. So Monday through the 22nd to the second, uh, Jordan Lake up in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. I'll be, I'll be there for, uh, what is that? About 12 days or so. I'll be up there. And the cool thing is, is we actually coordinated with some of our friends. So we have two of our friends that are actually going to be camping uh, one site in front of us and one site like just to the catacorner corner of us. So we're kind of in uh, we're all we're all three of us are in a little section together. We have our no nice. I'm on the water. They're not. But they'll have my water access and uh, they're coming for like the last four days that we're there, four or five days that we're there. So they're coming in like the 28th or 28th. I think one the 28th one. Actually, I think they're both coming in the 28th uh, and they're staying from the 28th to the second. So we'll be there from the 22nd to the second. Uh, so it'll be nice having friends. It's always nice to have folks, you know, uh, that, you know, hang out and vacation with you. That's that's always fun. They're they're The one has his own camper. He's coming from South Carolina. Actually, I think he's in Georgia now. No, he's in South Carolina. And then the other one's actually coming from Wisconsin. They're flying in and they've got a RV rented that's going to be set up on site. Um, so all, you know, the, the person that owns the camper that they they they, they rented it from uh it, like i said it's going to come set it all up for them so when they come it's just boom they're there it's set up they just got to drop their stuff and make make themselves at home so that's pretty cool uh but anyway uh let's see florida different places you are uh you are soon going on your vacation right i am yes going to the florida keys uh toward the end of the month wow for a few days i've never been to the keys i heard it's nice so enjoy that School is almost starting here in Florida. Yep, same here. A couple weeks left. At same, same here. There's right, it's right around the corner. We're already talking about school shopping and stuff already. I agree with you on the eBay not getting that much attention anymore. These other sites have taken over, but my first and always favorite will be eBay. Also, one of the great, uh, great advantages I have always been and found on eBay is that you can almost find anything you need on there. The rare, the oldest, discontinued. Not found, sold anywhere else. 99% of the items can be found on eBay. You're absolutely right. I, I'm an eBay lover too. There is, the attention is going. I, I'm not saying other platforms are taking over. I don't see that. eBay still number two, but there are definitely lots of eyeballs on those other platforms. And there's definitely a lot of the, uh, the younger generation is on those platforms, but eBay is still, still, still strong. I mean, I, I, I believe that a hundred percent. So I am team eBay all the way. Same, same. It has its ups and downs, but still the go-to app for me personally. I'm I'm right there with you, Yarina. Um, I agree. So agree with everything you said there. All right, let's go on to the next one. Uh, Justin says, "Thanks for sharing. I got a bad situation today. Uh oh, customer disputed receiving item, even though tracking says delivered. Well, eBay refunded them immediately, two hundred eighty dollars. Now I need to work on what to do. Call eBay if if your item shows tracking delivered to them." eBay should not have swung in their favor. So you'll need you'll need to call eBay and dispute that. I've had that happen before where they claim it didn't get delivered and delivery clearly shows. Now, we also have seller protection as well. I'm pretty sure that falls under seller protection that eBay is going to end up eating that. So you may need to call eBay and let them know, like, why did you, you know, that's fine if you want to refund the seller or the buyer. But what about me? At the end of the day, the tracking shows delivered. So, you know, that's, that's what they could they could certainly be lying, right? Now, are things delivered and they're not there? Yes, but here's the caveat. Once the post office or FedEx shows delivery and you try to file a claim on that, I've been there a couple of times. They, every time, at least in my experience, they don't, you know, whether they do or don't uh, for other for other folks experience, because, you know, things, things aren't always just cut and dry. In my experience, though, once it delivers and tracking shows done, the post offices and FedEx and UPS is done. They're not going to go back and be like, we're going to approve a claim for something that we showed delivered. Uh, so therefore, you can't do an insurance claim. You can try. But again, in my experience, I can only base it off my experience. So you can certainly try and see what happens. But uh, yeah, once once it shows delivered, that's pretty much it. So you can't even file a claim. So I'm that one I would call eBay. If that's ha I've had that happen, uh, but eBay didn't refund their money. Uh, well, I'm sorry. eBay refunded 
Well, it didn't come out of my money. I don't know what the what happened to the customer as far as that goes when they called eBay. I'm sure I, I believe they refund both in that case. Um, but the best I can say there, uh, Josh is called uh, Justin is called eBay and let them know, hey, you know, what gives? I mean, my tracking shows delivered. What if they're telling the stories and y'all re just refunded them? Like, how, how can I how can we confirm that? I've got stuff over there that you need to be careful of. You need to get out of here with that. Out of here with that. Okay. I heard you just hit something. Yep. Go ahead and get out of here with that, please. Last thing I need you is to fall over with that thing. Can you just get off of it and pick it up and get out of here? Because that's going to be hard. You're just going to wiggle back and forth? Yeah. You're crazy. All right. Um, yeah, that's. I wish I had a better, better suggestion, but that's odd that they refunded the buyer like that um, when it shows delivered. So I would certainly be contacting eBay. It looks like I'm not out of pocket on this. eBay refunded buyer out of their own funds, probably as a purchase postage through eBay. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, normally that's not, um, normally they don't just refund them from your funds because you're protected too as the seller and eBay does, does protect us a little bit. They're certainly buyer heavy, but they do protect us a little bit. So I'm glad, I'm glad that's the update there. I didn't, I should have read that first. Uh, next comment up is uh, T. Grant Ham. First time I think you've commented T. Grant Ham, 1973. Appreciate you hanging out. Appreciate you commenting. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't. That'd be appreciated. eBay fees are too much, so I never sell anything on there anymore. Well, I'm just going to st stop there and say BS. <laughs> You're not sourcing well enough and have enough margins if that's the case. So I'm just going to say that. So I'm going to stop you there. If we were talking live, I'd be like, nah, man. Nah, nah you, you ain't finding good enough stuff with enough margins in it. You must be looking for stuff for like $5, flipping it for 15 after fees and everything. What do you make? Like four bucks? You got to source stuff with bigger margins. So you got to get better at sourcing is going to be my tip there. Since the fees are so high, it's hard to get good deals on eBay like you could years ago. Well, I mean, if you're purchasing on eBay, it's not quite what it was years ago people are looking to get more on the premium side because i mean amazon stuff's crazy compared to a lot of in, in a lot of cases compared to ebay prices so a lot of people shop on amazon not realizing you can go into ebay and probably get it cheaper so ebay is still a deal place but there's also a lot of folks looking to get you know close to retail on stuff uh so i mean if you're buying on ebay um, I kind of agree with that. You can't get as many deals as you used to get, but you also got to dig a little bit too, man. Like there's some people that put lots on there that you can buy. They, you know, there's people that use eBay as their main source of income. What I mean by that, well, let me rephrase that. Their main source of sourcing. And what I mean by that, there's a lot of people, if you search for lots of things that you can get a really good deal on lots and then you get it and then you break it down and sell it individually and can make pretty good money that way. There's there's people that just do that. They just scour eBay for those deals, those lots where they can just have it shipped to them. They then process it and then they put it back on eBay or they're selling on Amazon and they then throw it on Amazon and, and make even more money getting it on Amazon. Uh, it's just hard to get to become a seller on Amazon. I've tried. It's all automated. There's like nobody to talk to. I, I haven't really pursued it since I tried originally, but when I tried originally, like two years ago, it was hard. It was not, it, it, it was hard. It was not easy. And I got, I did nothing. It didn't go nowhere. It's not like eBay where you can sign up for and pretty much get on there selling pretty quick. Um, hard to get deals like you could years ago. Therefore I barely buy anything on eBay as well. Uh, look, if you cross, if you cross look stuff up from Amazon to eBay, you're probably still going to get good deals on eBay. It depends what you're looking for though. But I will say the selling part, there's fees on every platform, unless you're selling through like marketplace and just doing live deals and things like that. I mean, whatnot, all these other platforms, TikTok, they got high fees as well. So you can't let the fees be the barrier. You just have to source better and have better margins. I mean, you got to pick stuff up that's $5 and sell it for 30 to 40, 50, 100. You know what I mean? That's where, that's when it does. I don't care what the fees are because I have so much margin and stuff. Uh, I mean, not all my stuff, but I mean, that's, ideally that's what you want to do is have a have a large margin so that way if they they take their little chunk you're still making good pro, good good profit um so anyway that's just my two cents and throw that you know be raw and unedited and be be straight shoot from you know t tell you exactly how i feel about it that's how i feel about it it's it's uh you got to source better and have better margins man uh to sell on there that's for sure so uh stealth says yeah i did okay hold on kurt all right so he replied to kurt so kurt says yo yo average joe 
I know a great way to stop buyer's remorse returns. Don't accept returns. Well, that's a controversial subject. That's what I'm going to actually put on my on my title is should you accept returns or not accept returns on eBay? Maybe we'll get some some uh, some good traction on this video. But uh, don't ex don't ex accept returns. Uh, I just requested nice nugget. I got that. Uh, I got that. Won't read discs. I will try that and let you know. Let me know. Uh, Jesus and Kurt, let me know if you guys try the alcohol uh, why, why call alcohol q-tip on the lens if it doesn't read discs do that on the lens i'm two for two right now let me know if y'all have success doing it um because yeah i'm curious how, how how it works for you guys as well um and then stealth reply no so so kurt you're right so stealth replied and said yeah i i did no returns before and then i still had them had to pay myself to ship the item back uh on some free shipping items i would be out 20 as part as part of the deal really sucks i mean you're not here's the thing let me reply to this let me how do i want to reply to this so um i accept returns free returns with me i've done it for a long 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 time i don't get a lot of returns i can't speak for other people um in my experience if you list properly you detail properly you give condition you know what i mean you you know you get take good pictures you know that you know minimizes your returns um buyer's remorse is rough but you know obviously even with buyer's remorse even with no returns kurt if they say it's not as described and it could be total bullshit that they're saying it's not as described ebay will make you accept the return and force you to take that item back so a lot of customers know that already on eBay. A lot of customers on eBay, unless they're new, they already know. They know that. They know item not as described is going to negate the whole no returns and force you to do the return. So I have returns on. I can't say it does any better for sales. The, the, the powers that be say it does. I, I, you know, I don't know. But I've always I, I, I worked in customer service for many, many years. I was a customer service manager. You know, that was that was. I was really good at my job and you know, you got to take care of your customers. So part of it is eating returns when they want to return it. All you can do is do your due diligence on the front end to avoid the returns. When it happens, it sucks. Yes. Like that game boy that the guys, you know, uh, just wanted to return it because he just didn't want it anymore. Okay, fine. Return it. I'm going to sell it again to somebody else. Am I going to make as much on it? No, I'm going to eat like 10, 15 bucks in charges or shipping, but I'm going to sell it again. And, and that's that. So, um, it's part of doing business. If you're not, uh, you know, you can do what you want as far as accept returns or not accept returns. That's totally up to you as being, being a seller. That's, you know, but I do what I do and I accept returns and I don't experience it a ton. It comes in waves. I feel like when I do get a return, I get like three and it's like, son of a, and then it goes, it goes dry with returns for a while. And I don't have any returns for a while. And then it, boom, you may get one and then boom, you get like three of them in one shot. So at the end of the day, it's, 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 I get the item back. I process it again. If I can resell it, it goes right back up to resell. If there was a problem with it and, and I overlooked it, then, you know, maybe that item goes in the trash. I don't know. I, I messed up, you know, that, that does happen too. So all you can do is you got to roll with the punches, man, because you think Walmart don't have returns and Walmart's going to say, no, you can't return something that's either defective or they don't want it or whatever. You think Amazon's going to say no when you return something because you tried it on, didn't like it or saw it, didn't like it in person. Like, you got to treat your business like a business. Real businesses offer returns for customers because that that that's why in a short time I've got over 200 followers. I would say probably because they get have a good experience with me and I've had customers you know where we where we have transactions that don't totally go the way they should have and it was an oversight by me and I offer some some sort of solution instead of a return like giving them some partial credit or you know or not credit but a partial refund or you know sending them out something you know that that you know uh uh, the, the right item or whatever, not the right item, but like a, a, an additional item instead of doing a return on that one, because it's cheaper for me to just send another one versus you know, like controllers, you know, just I'll send you another one. I got plenty of them, you know, kind of thing. That's that's fine. Instead of doing a return, let's I'll just shoot you another another one. Um, but if you offer no returns, I would say customers may click past you versus the one that has returns because they like that security. I mean, you can do no returns, but we also know that they can also do item not as described and be totally BS on that. It may be you may have described it to 100 percent and there's no way that they're they're lying. Basically, they're lying is what I'm saying. They're lying about the item not as described, but eBay is going to make you eat it on the on the way back. And there's nothing you can really do about it at that point. Once you get the item back, you got to refund them. Um, you can do a, like a dispute against the buyer. 
um, you know, and, and, you know, but that doesn't really go anywhere. They get like a strike on their account or something. I don't know. It's just not even worth it. It's just, you just, it just accept it back refund and keep it moving, man. If you do this long, if you do this long enough, you realize that, you know, you're, you get good at this. You, you, you don't get a ton of returns. Uh, and when you do, you just roll with it. It sucks, but you just roll with it, man. You just roll with it. Uh, but again, to each his own, you do what you feel like doing. Uh, my, for my seat, I'm offering returns. Uh, that's to me, it's a better experience. They have that little extra security. They may purchase my item over the next item because even though mine might be a dollar too higher, I have returns and you don't. So they're going to p- purchase mine versus yours. I, I'm, I'm sure that it's happened. I, I can't, I don't have numbers on that. I can't show you numbers on that, obviously, but I'm sure that happens. Um, anyway, so, uh, and stealth. Yeah. I mean, uh, so let's ship back. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you gotta, yeah, unfortunately that's just the way that's the, that's the, that's part of doing business. Yes. You're going to have to eat the returns and it really sucks sometimes. Yes. But you know, um, eBay gives you the platform to do this consistently, get tons of eyeballs on your stuff and sell stuff, you know, uh, all over the world. So, I mean, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, I mean, what's the alternative? I'm going to go on TikTok. I'm going to go on whatnot live and sell stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to try to get in Amazon and sell things there, you know, marketplace and have to drive and meet people every flipping day. No, no, thank you. I'm, I like doing this. I can pack and ship from here. It can get it out on the front porch. The mail lady gets it. Occasionally I got to go to CVS to drop off some UPS stuff. If I have a UPS pack, uh, that has to go UPS because it's too big or whatever. So that's an occasional trip, but otherwise it's, you know, the convenience of being able to do it all here. I mean, that's, that's, uh, you know, that, that outweighs some of those returns that you get from time to time. And that's, again, that's just from my perspective, from my seat. So anyway, let's keep moving. Cause I can ramble forever. Uh, Mike Gordon, uh, first time I think Mike Gordon has commented. Welcome. Hopefully you subscribed. Uh, appreciate you commenting. I've been a seller since 2000. I've been on eBay since 2000. There you go. I like it. Long time. You, you, you were, you've been around since, uh, money orders and Western union, uh, and third party payment platforms that, that weren't very good. I remember some of those third party payment, like pre PayPal type stuff. It was, it was wild back then. Anyway, wild West, uh, been full, uh, been full time for a few years. Last month and a half have been slow down, has slowed down for me. Went from 10 to 13 items a day to two or three a day. Same, same. I was crushing it. And then it's, it's slowed down the past few months where I'm, I'm still steady, still doing fine. Um, but yeah, things have certainly slowed down a bit. Um, um, and you know, somebody tried to say it was summer. It's the summer slowdown. Mm, I've never had a summer slowdown, uh, before. And I know other people have, so I know that's the, that's a, that's a thing. It does slow down a bit in the summer. I'm not going to say it's not a thing, but for me, I can only base on my experience typically in the past for the stuff that I pick and I, I source, I, I don't normally see much of a slowdown, maybe slight, but not really much of a slowdown come summertime. So, uh, if at all, so, um, yeah, no, I agree. It's definitely, it's definitely, you know, that's all we can do is keep, keep sourcing, keep pumping eBay, keep pushing things, keep doing your marketing promotions, keep doing your discounts, keep uh, posting things on eBay, you know, keep feeding the beast. That's all you can really do is keep feeding the beast. Uh, and, and consider cross listing. That's something that's continues to be on the back of my mind is cross listing to other platforms. Uh, I'm not there yet, but I'm sure that's going to be something here soon. Um, great. Thanks a lot. Says, how do you price things to sell? Or how do you price things you sell? I just, I'm just a hobby seller. So I try to undercut the competition and give the customer a great deal. When you're picking a garage sales for a few dollars, uh, that still leaves a nice margin. I found that reduces returns too. That does, that does uh, help with returns. Um, I, I start high because you can always bring it down. That's just my motto. I've always, that's the way I've always done it. So what I do is when I get, so first of all, let me just throw this out there. When I source 95% of the time, I'm just, I have the intuition. I have the experience. I have the knowledge of the things that I know about. And even some of the things that I don't quite know about, I know a little about, but haven't sourced a ton or come across a ton. There's a lot of stuff that I've dibble dabbled in. So I don't pull out my phone and look stuff up. I, part of, part of, why part of what I enjoy is when I get home looking things up and be like, Oh my goodness, that was a great pickup. You know, $5, that's a hundred dollar thing. You know, so that's, yeah, yes. Yeah. Give me a moment. I'm, I'm almost done. I'll get what I want. Okay. Um, so that, that's, I just kind of, that just tickles me. And so I, that's, that's, I enjoy doing it. Um, doing it that way. Um, I, you know, that that's, uh, you know, I, I'm just, I don't like, 
when folks are basically at yard sales or whatever, and they're just on their phone and you can tell all they're doing is looking everything up. And I'm just like, man, bump that. It's just a, you're going to waste a lot of time and B, like, I don't know. I just, the, to me, it's, it's uncomfortable to do that in front of the, the, the seller. Like, it's like, you know, I don't know, not to say I haven't done it, not to say I won't do it, but it's 95% of the time I'm, I'm out there sourcing based on now prior knowledge and prior sales. You can have one. Uh, you can have one for now and some fruit. There's watermelon, there's cantaloupe or there's water. Can you give me like five minutes and I'll help you? No. Uh, you have to press 30 twice cause it has to go on for a minute. So press 30 twice. Yes. Well, when you press 30, I believe it starts automatically. Um, so, oh man, I totally forgot. Oh, so, so anyway, uh, when I get home and I price stuff on eBay using sold comps, so let's say, I don't know, for example, what did I, something I just, I just listed. So, um, I don't know, we'll, we'll use one of these. All right. So like when I got these home, the little technique, you know, when I got these home, I, uh, I, uh, looked them up and they sell for about 25, 30 bucks. So I started off at 29.99 plus shipping. Um, I've, and I accept, I do offers, make sure that they've got offers set to on. So that way, if somebody wants to send me an offer, we can kind of negotiate and go from there. If it doesn't sell, which obviously it's not as not sold yet, then, you know, I, I have room to come down and I can either manually bring the prices down, which I've done that a couple times. It's, it's tedious, or I can just simply do a sale and then, you know, things start to start, start to, you know, sell. Sometimes it's just a matter of five bucks, three bucks, 10 bucks, and things start moving. So, but I always start high and I'm not saying follow my, my lead on that because, you know, undercutting the competition is also a good thing too. You can get more sales that way because you undercut the competition. So that's, you know, I, I, I've just never really done that. I've always started high and that's just how I do it. So I always start on the high side and if I need to come down or take an offer from there, I do. I, will I consider taking less? Absolutely. But I'm going to start off high because there's a lot of times those things, like for example, I, I have one of your, one of the sales I have right now that I'll go over with you guys is a PlayStation Vita that sold for like 170 or 160. That's a lot on the high side. It's been sitting for like a month and a half. Somebody finally bought it for, for full price. I think it was on like a 5% discount, but somebody basically bought it straight out. They didn't send me an offer. They just picked it up. Now that's on the high side of comps. If you look up Vita's, they're on like that 140 to 160 or 140 ish range, give or take, you know, now I will, a lot of times I'll go higher because I do so much processing with them. I clean things up, especially the video game stuff, you know, clothes, I'll probably price a little bit more competitively, still a little bit on the high side, but more competitively, but like the video game stuff, I sanitize clean, take time, uh, wrap the cords, zip tie them, make everything look nice and neat again, clean everything that needs to be clean, get all the all the controller juice out of the controller cracks and crevices you know take disinfectant wipes clean everything out make it look and be nice again it's not going to have a nasty film all over it and nasty junk and all the cracks and crevices and just look you know a bit dingy it's going to look as good as it can for the most part and so i with that i i i want a premium and so and and i do in many cases get a premium and other times i don't and that's i'm okay with that but um but yeah, so I just, that's just me again. That's, that can be controversial too. Like you should be, you know, you should be uh, undercutting the market and blah, blah, blah. Your, your margins are so good. Yeah. I could probably, and I may be selling more stuff possibly. I, that, that may be the case. I've just, I'm used to the way I do things and that's the way I do things. So um, I can always, you can always come down on price. You can't go back up. So when you, when you could have made more on something because you priced it too low, you know what I mean? Like that's, that, Trust me, the worst feeling is when you put something on eBay and it sells almost instantly and you're like, dang, I priced that too low. You know what I mean? Like that happens a lot. Well, it doesn't happen to me a lot, but it's happened to me quite a bit in the past where that's happened, you know, over the last 20 some years, I've posted quite a many things on eBay and there's been several things over the years that just like, you're like, man, I could have got way more out of that. I mean, I posted it too low. You know, it, whether it's a rare item, I was looking at the wrong comps. Maybe it had, it was, it wasn't quite exactly what I thought it was or what I was looking at and whatever, 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 whatever. But that's always one of those feelings like, dang, I left money on the table. So I'd rather not leave money on the table and take an offer for less 
And, you know, I'm okay with stuff sitting for a little bit. And again, that's just me. That's, that's the way I operate. There's not a right or wrong answer or right or wrong way to do things. Um, but that's just how I do things. So hopefully that helps. Um, that's all we got as far as comments. I think I replied. Yep. I did reply to that. All right. So let's move on to sales and then I'll let you guys go. We're already about 35 minutes. So this won't take long. I got between yesterday and today, we're doing, we're doing okay. Yesterday and today we got five sales for a total of 459.90. Again, five sales for 459.90. First thing that sold was uh let's see. We got a gun. Pro gun sold for 949 plus shipping. Hey, what's happening? I'll be right back. All right, so next thing that sold was the Mule Backpack. I bought this at that 301 sale for $10. I was getting ready to walk away from it, and I went back and looked at it, and the guy said, I'll take 10 bucks for it. I was like, all right, bet, I'll take it. So this was the only real nice pickup from the 301 sale was this Mule Backpack, uh, the rucksack. It's got the, the bracket and everything on it. So this sold for one, uh, 175 plus shipping on that one 175 plus shipping again pick that out for 10 bucks uh these i've had these cups forever man finally they sold in fact where are they at um let's see they are coca-cola cups and they're the restaurant coca-cola cups i've had them for so long i got i lost them um well coca-cola cups coca-cola where are you at coca-cola cups i know i got you somewhere i think you're hiding somewhere you've been you've been it's been so long Uh, well, I may have to look for those off camera. Yeah, I'm gonna look for those off camera. So, um, anyway, Coca-Cola cups, it's a stack of 12 of them, 24 ounce Coca-Cola cups. They're clear, the restaurant style Coca-Cola cups. I got them at a yard sale for five bucks. They sold for 25 plus shipping. Usually I've had them before and they've sold for more, but those have been sitting a while. So I just went ahead and took, took the offer. What you got? You're heading out? Uh, no. Oh, yet. all right. I'm almost done. Um, so anyway, those sold for 25 plus shipping last thing or two, two things. I don't know where these cups went. That's, uh, let's see. Yeah. I wish I could find these cups. I know they're somewhere. All right, we got a phone, nine dollars plus shipping. A little AT and T phone, I picked up for a buck. So I've been holding on to that for a while. And the last thing that sold was that PlayStation Vita. So the PlayStation Vita sold for one sixty one plus shipping. One sixty one plus shipping. So yep, that's it. I just got to find those cups now. I think they're there on the, on the other side, actually. Uh, but anyway, PS Vita, very nice condition. Comes with the charger, comes with a little, little case. And uh, very nice condition, Vita. So again, this sold for $161.49 plus shipping. So there's that. So again, total five sales for $459.90. So there's that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump off of here. I got my RV guy. He's going to help do the roof, assuming the weather's good. And uh, he thinks we, we can knock it out. If not, then 
he may end up returning, but, and then my dad's waiting for me over there too. So, uh, and then my daughter's trying to do breakfast. <laughs> so I'm gonna get this stuff packed and shipped. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. Hopefully you got a little something from the comments and going over those things. And, uh, yeah, again, drop comments. I'm, I'll be back probably tomorrow to show you off what I sourced and we'll be back tomorrow. And, uh, if not, we'll be back Monday. So I'll certainly touch on your comment either tomorrow or Monday. Uh, make sure you subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Bye everybody.